And now John Gant, the reigning king. Last week, we saw the incredible power, cupped wrist, powerful release of John Gant. We're going to see it again today. On the very first pitch. Tell you, what, tell you what, Fred, he, he's just incredible with what he does to the pins. <laughs> I wish we could have crossed with him yesterday when we bowled. We, uh, we'd have had a lot of fun. John's a super guy, too. Has not intimidated, uh, imitated Jim Sparks at all. He will, be, he, he will be throwing the ball right where he's been throwing it the last two games for victories. Going to try to do it again right in the area of the second arrow for another perfect strike. Jim doesn't look intimidated at all to me, does he, Fred? No, he is ready to go. Broke up the split, at least. He's happy about that. Yeah, again, on the left lane where he has a tendency to go high. Six pin, a relatively easy spare. He should shoot it across lane. I'd like to congratulate Don Scudder, who was our last year's king, 1982, the queen, via McKinney. Jim covering his spare, naturally. And the youth king, Harold Peets. John Gant, a lefty, a former pitcher for the University of Cincinnati. A hard thrower, both with a baseball and a bowling ball. Hard thrower, to say the least. I'm going to get the bill for broken pins. Boy, I, I tell you what, he just unmercifully destroys racks. Power. The pins will just look for a way to get out. That ball is actually making revolutions as it's sitting in the pit, Fred. Revolutions, the name of the game for John Gant. In warm-ups, John was trying about, it seemed eight or ten different balls and he seems to find one that he likes now. He made three trips to the car coming in with equipment. Left one that time. So John Gant with a double and nine. Slightly high leaving the six pin. Not a bad shot. Double nine to start with. I'd like to remind everybody this week is Bowl Down Cancer Week. A very, very worthwhile cause. In your league bowling this week, you'll have people come around. We ask you to donate as generously as you possible. You are competing for cash prizes. There are three divisions for the juniors, the men, and the women, all of which uh, just a very, very, very good cause. Last week, the local organization donated $40,000 to the Cancer Research Organization. That is super. Oh. Tough, tough break for Jim Sparks on the right lane. Throwing the ball very, very well. Executing the ball rolling down the lane, entering the pocket at a very good angle. A hair tight, if anything. Six pin going to the wall, missing the seven coming off. Four pin, I mean. He covered it. Ten pins behind. Jim Sparks is ten pins behind John Gant. 49-39. Both with a spare in the third, and now Jim Sparks will work in the fourth. He's 49 years old, 191 average, both two nights a week. Hit it heavy that time and left the three pin. Is that the three? Yeah, Please Jim, Jim is, uh, Jim again on the, on the left lane, having a little bit of trouble. I really expect him to make some sort of an adjustment over there if he intends to beat Mr. Gant this week. John, as we saw last week, the minute his opponent makes a mistake, he'll jump all over you. So far, Jim Sparks is clean through four frames. John Gant coming up in the fourth. There you see the score. Sparks with a 58 in the third, Gant 49 in the second, working on a spare in the fourth. Griff, the proprietor here, has been very congenial to us 
here at Northwest Lanes. He's always, always very receptive to the bowlers here. Leaving the six pin again. Ball running up a little high on John Gant. He's well within the pocket area though and capable of striking from that area. Ball breaking off a little sharply, getting a little bit too much of the head pin, leaving the six cross lane. Covered it nicely. Yes, he does. So what, John Gant with a spear in the fourth. He shoots quite a bit of those, Fred. I don't really expect him to miss them too often. Fran Ruggieri, as always, very cordial and here again, the president of the BPA and proprietor of the Golden Triangle. Right. One of the houses, the Northwest, Colerain, Seymour Organization. Sam Coleman being the BPA tournament chairman is also here. Tommy Gray from the Sanibel, where we'll be at next week, is yes. also in the crowd. Ran into him yesterday. Again going high. He asked me yesterday, he goes, Fred, did you make the show? I said, yeah, as the host. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way I'm going to make this thing. That's, uh, well, I wouldn't say that, Fred. You, your style just needs quite a bit of refining. Maybe, you know, 10, 15 years worth of work, and we can get you on the show. <laughs> Maybe we didn't knock too many down, but we surely had a good time yesterday. Knocked down a... Knocked down several hooties. Yes, that's, that's right. Ten pin covered for John Gant. And in the fifth frame, John Gant has a spare up in 87 in the fourth. We've got another great championship game, so stay with us. We'll call it a beer frame and be back right after this. By 10 pins, and now up in the fifth frame is Jim Sparks on the right lane. Jim with a strike on the right lane. Could cut the deficit to nine. Have the extreme advantage of a strike working going in. Getting out of the ball a little late, Fred, and what I mean by that is the, the the thumb should be coming out of the ball first and then going on to the fingers. He's hanging up, coming out in one motion, which will cause the bowler to pull the ball, also kill the action. Uh, it was a fortunate break. He broke up the split that time, making his spare. Trailing by 11 now. Jim Sparks, who is up on the left lane. That lane has given him trouble all day long. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Let's see if Jim can figure it out now. Jim, I tell you what, for not uh, having a whole lot of tournament competition under his belt, he's done quite well today, Fred. 16 strikes in the first two games. Not bad. Yeah. Tough break. Real tough. Baby split. What, what we saw there is normally you're going to see the bowler leave the 2-4-5. He, he got a, a bad break with a pin rolling around to kick out the 2-pin, which has now created a split. Now watch this. The 2-pin goes straight back instead of taking out either pin on the side. It has a split. You have to fit it up perfectly like that. Beautiful. Jim Sparks covers the 4-5. Excellent, excellent shot, Fred. You have to be dead on the money to bring that one back. And he was. All important spare for Jim Sparks as John Gant, our reigning king. You figure you've got a half inch to play with on each side of the pin. You've got to fit it up over 60 feet of lane. He did quite a job. John Gant will now try to quell a little of the enthusiasm with a strike. There it is. A strike by John Gant in the sixth frame gives him a 107. <laughs> oh, John Gant, again, power is the only word that can describe this strike. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Jeez. John Gant just doesn't strike. He destroys pins. Put a lot of pressure on Jim Sparks with another one here. Over the top. Up and around. Even though John Gant throws with a lot of speed and a lot of revolutions, sometimes the speed hurts him. And uh, we're going to see on this shot here, the pin, instead of staying down and taking out the six pin, it goes up. See it going up and around the back there? Sometimes the speed does hurt him. 
recovers it for a spare. As usual, Bo Hrupo, the executive secretary, sitting there on camera, keeping score. Bill Siebel, another one of the proprietors is here. And obviously, the people from Hudipal. As Jim Sparks buries another one on the right lane, Fred. He now trails by 13 pins. He really likes this right lane. Eyes down, good extension. Gets out of the ball very cleanly this time. Perfect strike. 10 pins in the pit. He could cut the deficit to three pins right here with a strike. Solid 10. Put it where it had to be. Under pressure, knowing he has to strike, Jim executes perfectly. The ball entering the pocket, the six pin on the right will go around the bottom of the 10 pin as you saw there. A bay of break a bad break. It was, it was a very crucial strike. Ooh. Lane was a little too long that time for uh, Mr. Sparks. Jim made a very bad error. You know what John Gant does when his opponent does this. He buries them. He normally buries them. Jim not too happy with himself right now because he's seen John Ball before. John will rear back and let this one fly. As predicted, Fred. As predicted. You could almost bet on it. John Gant, knowing now he has the lead in his grasp, throws an excellent shot. The revolutions, the power, the pin action. They don't even have a chance. No doubt. A 147 in the seventh for John Gant, working on a strike now in the ninth frame. John Gant could close this game out conceivably with a strike here. Still a breath of life left for Jim Sparks. Again, the left lane that's giving the right-handers a little bit of problem by hooking more. Also, John Gant. High, breaking down the split, but yet leaving the six. Relatively easy spare for John. Shooting cross lane. Should bring this one back. And he does. Got the spare. John Gant, 167, 142 for Mr. Jim Sparks. And needless to say, Fred, Jim has to strike out. John has to open comes down to simple. Oh, man. Mathematically, the match is over, and John Gann is our king once again. But I sure would like to see this one made on the air. Fred, this, <laughs> this is a beautiful, beautiful shot to see made. Uh, Jim will try to throw the ball across lane, hitting the four pin on the left side, sliding it in front of the nine and the ten, taking them both out. Mm, missed them all little bit of disgust at that point, knowing the match is over. John Gant, once again our king, Fred, with the incredible power that he displays each and every week, will collect a check for $750. And we will see him next week at the Los Santaville Lanes. He's just trying to bowl out now, it seems. Yeah, yeah, he's look, looking for the exit sign at this particular point, Fred, but Again, a super, super showing by a man who has not been in the tournament situation for many, many years. Um, if there is anything is an, is an average good bowler, Jim is it. And, and it just goes to show anybody can make the show, anybody can come out here and bowl well. Uh, Jim naturally is not going to finish with a score as, as high as he would like, but his first two games, well into the 200s. Oh, yeah. 214 in the first game and a 245 in the second game for Jim Sparks. So he has made a very fine showing today. He certainly has. Uh, what did he tell us before, that he was just uh, now starting tournament bowling? What, this year, right? Yeah, this, this year was the first year he's come out in quite a while because of his physical injuries. 
John Gant now would just bowl out. I'd like to thank the uh, people from Huda Paul Brewery there. Ken Dressman's here. Lee Ritter, they're both here. We're going to talk to them after the show a little bit. Tripping out the six pin that time. Jim Sparks, you saw, finished with a 166. You saw him move several six pins before. This time we're going to see the normal John Gant trip six. Looked like a clip to me, Fred, but I didn't see a flag. <laughs> They're all down again. A double in the tenth frame for John Gant. And as we saw last week, he pours it on. Yes, he's going to finish in the two teens. Another creditable showing. BPA Fine Organization sponsors a junior traveling league, which will be bowling in uh, a couple houses today. John Gant finishing with 217. Our Great. king again, Fred. He defeats Jim Sparks with a 166, and we will meet the top four bowlers when we come back. John Gant, again our king, 217 to 166. With Dave Newrath and Dave, how about the presentation? Sam Coleman's going to be handing out the checks today to our first runner-up, Tom Casey, $150. Tom, creditable showing, just run into a little hard luck out there, shooting 202 and coming up second best that game. Congratulations. Right Number three man in the clubhouse, Bill, <laughs> Phil Hefflin, older than the game himself, one of the finest individuals, individuals I've ever met, $225 bill, Super Bowl, and you'll be back, I'm sure. Thank you. Mr. Sparks, creditable showing. You came out here and you did a very, very fine job, Jim. We want to, we want to thank you for a good show. And, and Jim, we'll see you again next time. $375 from the BPA. And now, Mr. John Gant. Thank you, Sam. John, again, the king. Congratulations. Another great job. Thank you. Now, when you came out today, you brought about, it looked like, uh, eight or ten balls with you. What was the reason for that? Well, you're not really sure the lanes are, and uh, when I first started, they seemed to be hooking a lot. Then the old traveled down the lane a little bit and got a little bit tighter, so I had to switch balls and experiment a little bit. So how was that line? Did you feel comfortable out there? It wasn't really easy. I just had to just try and play it safe, just hit the pocket and see what happens. Well, you'll be back again next week. Good luck. Thank you. John Gant, again our BPA King of Bowling. So next week we will be at Los Santaville Lanes. Tom Gray, the proprietor there, so be sure and join us. For Dave Newrath, our director Roy Offers, and executive producer Bill Spiegel, I'm Fred Khalil. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week at Los Santaville Lanes on the BPA King of Bowling. <laughs>